Hello and welcome to Simply Learn. In this session, we're going to cover what Kubernetes is and why you would want to be using it within your DevOps team. But before we get started, remember to hit the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you want to get notified about more of these videos as they come out. And as always, if you have any comments about the content that we're covering or questions that you have on the subject, please post them in the comments below. So let's get started. We're going to break up this presentation into four key areas. We're going to talk about life before Kubernetes, which some of you are probably experiencing right now. What is Kubernetes? The benefits that Kubernetes brings to you, particularly if you are using containers in a DevOps environment. And then finally, we're going to break down the architecture and working infrastructure for Kubernetes. So you understand what's happening and why the actions are happening the way that they are. So let's jump into our first section of life before Kubernetes. So the way that you have done work in the past, or you may be doing work right now, is really building out and deploying solutions into two distinct areas. One is a traditional deployment where you're pushing out code to physical servers in a data center, and you're managing the operating system and the code that's actually running on each of those servers. Another environment that you may potentially be using is deploying code out to virtual machines. So let's go through and look at the two different types of deployment that you may be experiencing. When you have applications running on multiple machines, you run into the potential risk that the setup and configuration of each of those machines isn't going to be consistent and your code isn't going to work effectively. And there may be issues with uptime and errors within the infrastructure of your entire environment. There's going to be problems with resource allocation and you're going to have error issues where applications may be running effectively and not, not effectively and not load balanced. Um, effectively across the environment. The problem that you have with this kind of infrastructure is that it gets very expensive. Uh, you can only install one piece of software, or one service on one piece of hardware. So your hardware is being massively underutilized. This is where virtual machines have become really popular. With a virtual machine, you're able to have better resource utilization and scalability at much less cost. And this allows you to be able to run multiple virtual machines on a single piece of hardware. The problem is, is that VMs or for virtual machines are not perfect either. Some of the challenges you run with VMs is that the actual hardware and software need, needed to manage the VM environment can be expensive. There are security risks with virtual, with VMs. There are security risks with VMs. There have been data breaches recorded about solutions that run in virtualized environments. You also run into an issue of availability. And this is largely because you can only have a finite number of virtual machines running on a piece of hardware. And this results in limitations and restrictions in the types of environment you want to be running. And then finally, setting up and managing a virtualized environment is time consuming. Uh, it can take a lot of time and it can also get very expensive. So how about Kubernetes? Well, Kubernetes is a tool that allows you to manage containerized deployment of solutions. And inherently, Kubernetes is a tool that is really a next level maturity of deployment. So if you can think of your maturity curve as deploying code in directly to hardware in a data center, and then deploying your solutions to virtual machines, the next evolution of that deployment is to use containers and Kubernetes. So let's kind of go through and look at the differences between a virtual machine and Kubernetes. And we've got a few here that we want to highlight and you'll get an understanding of what the differences are between the two. So first of all, with virtual machines, there is inherently security risks. And what you'll find as we get, dig through the architecture later in the presentation is that Kubernetes is inherently secure. Um, and this is largely because of the legacy code, uh, the legacy of Kubernetes and where it came from. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But Kubernetes is inherently secure. 
Uh, virtual machines are not easily portable. Now, with that said, they, they are technically portable. They're just not very easily portable. Whereas with Kubernetes, it's working with Docker container uh, solutions. It is extremely portable. That means that you can actually spin up and spin down and manage your infrastructure exactly the way that you want it to be managed and scale it on the demands of the customers as they're coming in to use the solution. From a time-consuming point of view, Kubernetes is much less time consuming than with a, a virtual machine. A few other areas that we want to kind of um, highlight from differences. Virtual machines use much less isolation when, when building out the uh, encapsulated environment than Kubernetes does. Uh, for instance, with a virtual machine, you have to run hypervisor on top of the OS and hardware. And then inside of the virtual machine, you also have to have the operating system as well. Whereas in contrast, on a Kubernetes environment, because it's leveraging a Docker container and, and or container-like uh, technologies. It only has to have the OS and the hardware. And then inside of each container, it doesn't need to have that additional OS layer. It's able to inherit what it needs to be able to run the application. This makes the whole solution much more flexible and allows you to run many more containers on a piece of hardware than versus running virtual machines on a single piece of hardware. So as we um, highlighted here, uh, VMs are not as portable as Q um, Kubernetes and Kubernetes is portable directly related to the use of containerization. And because Kubernetes is built on top of containers, it is much less time consuming because you can actually script and automatically allocate resource to nodes within your Kubernetes environment. This allows the infrastructure to run much more effectively and much more efficiently. So this is why if we look at our evolution of the land of time before Kubernetes, why we are running into a solution where Kubernetes had to come about because the demand for having more highly scalable solutions that are more efficient was just really a natural evolution of this software deployment model that started with pushing out code to physical hardware and then pushing code out to virtual machines and then needing to have a solution much more sophisticated. Kubernetes would have come about at some point in time. I'm just really glad it came about when it did. So what is Kubernetes? Let's, let's dig into the history of Kubernetes and how it came about. So in essence, uh, Kubernetes is an open source platform that is, allows you to manage and deploy and maintain groups of containers. And a container is something like Docker. And if you're developing code, you're probably already using Docker today. Consider Kubernetes as the tool that manages multiple Docker environments together. Now, we talk a lot about Docker and as a container solution with Kubernetes. The reality is, is that Kubernetes can actually use other container tools out there, but Docker just simply is the most popular container out there. Both these tools are open source. That's why they're so popular. And they just allow you to be able to have flexibility in being able to scale up your solutions. And they were designed for the post-digital world that we live and exist in today. So a little bit of background, a little bit of uh, trivia around uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so Kubernetes was originally a successor to a project at Google, and the original project was Google Borg. Um, Google Borg it does exactly what Kubernetes done, does today, but Kubernetes was rewritten from the ground up and then released as an open source project in 2014 so that people outside of Google could take advantage of the power of Kubernetes containerization management tools. And today it is managed by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And there are many, many companies that support and manage Kubernetes. So for instance, if you're signing up for Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, all of them will leverage Kubernetes. And it's just become the, the de facto tool for managing large groups of containers. So let's kind of step through some of the key benefits that you'd experience from Kubernetes. Uh, so we have nine key benefits. Uh, the first, it is highly portable. Well, it is 100% open source code. And this means that you can actually go ahead and contribute to this code project if you want to through GitHub. Uh, the ability to scale up the solution is incredible. Um, what's um, the, the history of Kubernetes being part of a Google project for managing the Google network and infrastructure uh, kind of really sets the groundwork for having a solution that is highly scalable. The 
out of the high scalability also comes the need for high availability. And this is the desire to be able to have a highly efficient and highly energized environment that also you can really rely on. So if you're building out a Kubernetes management um, environment, you know that it's going to be um, available for the solutions that you're maintaining. And it's really designed for deployment. So you can script out the environment and actually have it as part of your DevOps model so you can scale up and meet the demands of your customer. Then what you'll find is that the um, load balancing is extremely efficient and it allows you to distribute the load efficiently across your entire network. So your network remains stable. And then also the tool um, allows you to uh, manage the orchestration of your storage. So you can have local storage such as an SSD on the hardware that the Kubernetes is ma maintaining. Or if the Kubernetes environment is pulling storage from a public cloud such as Azure or AWS, you can actually go ahead and make that available to your entire system. And you can inherit the security that goes back and forth uh, between the cloud environments. And one of the things you'll find consistent with Kubernetes is that it is designed for a cloud-first uh, environment. Um, Kubernetes as well is that it's, it's really a self-healing environment. So if something happens or something fails, uh, Kubernetes will detect that failure and then either restart the process, kill the process, or replace it. And then because of that, you also have automated rollouts and rollbacks uh, in case uh, you need to be able to manage the state of the environment. And then finally, uh, you have automatic bin packaging. So you can actually specify the compute power that's being used from CPU and RAM for each container. So let's dig into the final area, which is the actual Kubernetes architecture. And we're going to cover this uh, at a high level. There's actually another video uh, that you can, uh, that Simply Learn has developed, which digs deeper into the Kubernetes architecture. And so the Kubernetes architecture is a cluster based architecture, and it's really about two key areas. You have the Kubernetes master, which actually controls um, um, all of the activities within your entire Kubernetes infrastructure. And and then you have nodes um, that actually are, are running on Linux machines um, out, that are controlled by the master. So let's kind of go through some of these um, areas. So uh, if we look at the Kubernetes master uh, to begin with, um, then we'll start with uh, etc. This is a tool that allows for the configuration of information and the management of nodes within your cluster. And one of the key features that you'll find with all of the tools that are managed within either a the master environment or within a node is that they are all accessible via the API server. Um, and what's interesting about the API server is that it's a RESTful based infrastructure, which means that you can actually secure each connection with SSL um, and other um, security models to ensure that your entire infrastructure and the communication going back and forth across your infrastructure is tightly secured. Scheduler goes ahead and actually, as you'd expect, it actually um, manages the schedule of activities within the actual cluster. And then you have the controller. And the controller is a daemon server that actually manages and pushes out the instructions to all of your nodes. So uh, the other tools really are the uh, the infrastructure, and, the, and you can consider them the administration side um, of the master, whereas controller is the management. It actually pushes out all of the controls via the API server. So let's actually dig into um, one of the actual nodes themselves and there are three key areas of the nodes one is the docker environment which actually helps and manage and maintain the container that's actually inside um, of the node and then you have the kubelet which is responsible for information that goes back and forth and it's going to do most of the conversation with the api server on the actual health of that node and then you have the actual kubernetes proxy which actually runs the services actually inside of the node so as you see all of these infrastructure structures are extremely lightweight and designed to be very efficient and very available for your infrastructure. And so here's a quick recap of the different tools that are available. And it really breaks down into two key areas. You have your Kubernetes master and the Kubernetes node. Uh, the Kubernetes master has the instructions of what's going to happen within your Kubernetes infrastructure. And then it's going to push out those instructions to an indefinite number of nodes that will allow you to be able to scale up and scale down your solution in a dynamic way. And that provides you an overview of Kubernetes. Hopefully you found that useful and informative. We have a 
video, um, which is a deeper dive into the Kubernetes architecture. There'll be a link uh, below in the instructions. Again, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. If you hit the bell, that will allow you to get notified of updates when they become available. And as always, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. We do read your questions and we do respond to them as quickly as we can. Hopefully you got some information out of this and we're really excited to see what you do with Kubernetes in your environment, in your network. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.